sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get over 2,400 documentaries for free for 31 days. Link in the description. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is Vector. The Galaxy Note 10 is here. I spoke all about it with Daniel Bader from Android Central, so be sure to check that video out if you haven't already. Now, in this video, I want to talk all about the features from the Note 10 that I'd love to see Apple bring to the iPhone 11 or iPhone 12 if they're already locked and loaded for September. One, Apple Pencil. It's perennial at this point and is going to stay top of the list until Apple takes it out of the labs and puts it into my geeky little hands. We've seen rumors of Apple Pencil support coming to the iPhone for years. And by rumors, I mean financial analyst fanfic for investor notes. But while it's always coming, it's never quite arriving. I'd all caps love it, especially a smaller version to better fit with the smaller device, especially now that Pencil Kit is a thing, Apple's new framework for easy pencil integration into apps. And especially with iPadOS here to provide more and growing differentiation between the phone and the tablet beyond just Apple Pencil. But I've learned to only expect it when I see it. Two. Colors. The iPhone XR brought some Apple chromatic flair back to the lineup last year, but for the XS, you could only get them in white, gray, or the gold that the X line shipped the year before. But I've long had lust in my heart, not just for the colors. Samsung and Huawei are fielding, but the metallic gradients, they're fielding them in. Sure, they're trendy more than timeless. And maybe in a few years, that aura will look the equivalent of bell bottoms and a hang glider collar. But I'm so down with phone as fashion. And if that means I have to hide my out of fashion shame in a case come 2020 or 2021, I'm so down with doing that as well. Again, I don't expect it, but if they offered the next iPhone in Apple card gradient, I'd jump on it. Three, video bokeh. I use my iPhone for most of my B-roll. It's just so much easier to carry around, to move around. It's got great battery life, and I don't have to fuss with SD cards, especially when I'm at events. But I really miss depth of field. Having everything in focus means nothing is really in focus. Better glass helps. The iPhone XS telephoto camera can get really nice real world bokeh if you compose the shots just right. But that's impossible to sustain for most video shoots. Almost impossible, at least for me. So doing computational depth effect, much like they've been doing with still since the 2016 iPhone 7 is my answer. Apple segmentation masking is getting better. There's still no Google when it comes to algorithms, but they still have the best silicon on any phone, the best virtual lens modeling, and one of, if not the best video cameras on a phone. So computationally optimistic we'll see it sooner rather than later. And that, you know, it'll actually work well enough to be usable. Four, time of flight. We've already had all sorts of rumors about a time of flight sensor coming, if not to the iPhone 11, then to the iPhone 12. But like I said earlier this week, Apple's version needs to have more compelling use cases than what we're seeing so far. Again, ship feature sets, not just chipsets, but I want that rear augmented reality camera pad so bad. Five, super fast charging. Look, I get it, nothing is free. The faster you charge, the hotter the battery gets, and that's bad for its long-term health. But just because something can charge super fast doesn't mean it has to all of the time. I have no problem with the faster chargers being optional extras for those who know they really want them, but use some AI. Hell, give me a turbo button if you need to, to let me charge safe and slow overnight or on long trips or at my desk, but hot and fast when I only have a few deca minutes to top up again before running out again and keep making that battery case smarter and better as well. Six, USB-C. I mean, of course, of course. I'm super sympathetic to everyone out there with a ton of lightning cables and adapters who is still super salty over switching from the 30 pin dock just seven short years ago. And if you make us switch again, freaking cut you. But it's time. Like I said in my lightning explainer video a couple of weeks ago, iPhone 10 would have been ideal, and this year doesn't seem to be in the cards, but if not now, then next. We're not ready to go full on portless yet. Everything from charging to data transfer, but most especially recovery just isn't there yet. So unless Apple is waiting on some big mini USB-C announcement from the consortium, it really is time for that one port to just rule them all. Seven, Dex. Just kidding, kinda. 
<laughs> not totally. Dex does seem like an overly complicated and wrought and non-cohesive way to replicate the continuity features Apple's been rolling out between iOS and the Mac going on five years now. And it's tough to see Apple offering a Windows utility that replicates any of that stuff from AirDrop to call and message relay to iCloud keychain and clipboard, any of it. But once you get USB-C, Going the other way with things like external displays, again, features the iPad already supports, would let you make the most out of your iPhone if that's the only device you have with you. Especially as Catalyst or UIKit on the Mac makes desktop versions of iOS apps a reality. Eight, Satya Nadella. Microsoft CEO was by far, by far the best and most compelling presenter on the Samsung stage, but they didn't give him anything to present. I'd love to see him up on an Apple event stage, not introducing Office for Catalyst. There's already a full desktop version for that, but introducing a privacy-focused set of internet tools for people who love the iPhone, but want and need an option very much other than Google, Gmail, and G Suite. Nine, ARM books. Okay, sure, fine. This has nothing to do with phones, but still everything to do with what I wanna see next. Samsung announced the Galaxy Book S, a new 13-inch laptop that has absolutely zero Intel inside. Instead, it has the ARM-based Qualcomm 8CX. It has LTE built in, and it gets like 23 hours of battery life, 23 hours. And it made everyone who prefers Mac OS to Windows and has had their hearts set on a MacBook running something akin to an A12X just turn around and ask Apple, are we there yet? <laughs> yeah just a little more. 10, updated OLED. Apple's display team has already been taking the best OLED Samsung's process has to offer and then doing all their own mitigations, masking, color science, and more. So this is the closest to a gimme we're gonna get on this list. At least in less than until LG proves good enough to dual source or Apple's own micro LED supersedes it all. Either way, I just wanna see CuriosityStream on it. Founded by John Hendricks of the Discovery Channel and with original content featuring Stephen Hawking, Sigourney Weaver, Michio Kaku, David Attenborough, Sylvia Earle, Jane Goodall, and many more, CuriosityStream is the world's first streaming service addressing our lifelong quest to learn, to explore, to understand. Just go to curiositystream.com slash vector for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series and enter the promo code vector to start your membership completely free for the first 31 days. Thanks CuriosityStream and thanks to all of you for supporting Vector. So pencil, colors, video bokeh, time of flight, super fast charging, Microsoft, updated OLED and throw in a MacBook ARM and I'm happy, but I'd love to know what would make you happy. So hit like, hit subscribe, where we Kenshin that bell gizmo so you don't miss the next video, and then hit up the comments and give me your list. Thank you so much for watching and see you next video.